Today we're going to look at a pretty interesting problem involving a recursively defined sequence. And maybe we'll call this the average recursion. And so let's take seeds A0 and A1, where A0 is A and A1 is B. And then we'll define AN plus 2 to be the average of the previous two terms. So in other words, it's AN plus 1 plus AN over 2. And this is going to hold for all N bigger than or equal to 0. So notice this recursion takes over at A2. A2 will in fact be the average of A and B. And then our goal is to determine if the limit of this sequence exists. And then if it exists, find its value. Okay, so let's do a little bit of exploration on the first couple of values to see you know, what's going on here. So as we said before, a2 will be the sum of the previous two terms divided by 2. In other words, the average of the previous two terms. That'll be a plus b over 2. And then a3 will be a2 plus a1, which is b, over 2. So again, the average of the previous two terms. But we know what a2 is from our previous step. So this is a plus b over 2 plus b all over 2. So we've got some sort of thing like that to simplify. And it's pretty easy to simplify. And this will reduce to a plus 3 times b over 4. And we can see that maybe multiplying this numerator by 2 to clear this, and then the denominator by 2, and then combining like terms. And then let's see, a4 will be a3 plus a2 over 2, but that's going to turn into a plus 3b over 4 plus a plus b over 2 all over 2. But then we've got a little bit of simplification to do there. And what you'll see is that we get 3a plus 5b over 8. So you can check that, but that's what you'll end up with. And then maybe I'll write one more down. Let's look at a5. And I won't go through the calculation, but what you end up with here is 5a plus 16 or 11b, I should say. 5a plus 11b over 16. So looking at this, I think maybe it's kind of clear that this will converge. And why do I say that? Well, notice that this denominator is a power of 2, and that's going to grow very, 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 very quickly. Whereas these numerators always stay like lower than this power of 2. So this 5 is going to get dominated by the power of 2, 16. This 11 is going to get dominated by this power of 2, 16 as well. As well, the same kind of thing is going on over here. So like I said, I think this will converge, but we will check that it converges carefully. So how might we check that it converges? Well, I think our best bet is with the monotone sequence theorem. So the monotone sequence theorem says that if we can show this is either increase or increasing or decreasing and then bounded above or below, respectively, then it will converge. And once we know it converges, we can do a nice little algebraic trick to find its value. So before we get started, let's find a bound for this. And I think it's actually pretty easy to find a very loose bound. Notice that this thing is bound above definitely by a plus b. Well, that's pretty clear. a plus b over 2 is less than a plus b. I guess I need to add a caveat in here that a and b are both bigger than 0. But we can do that. And then maybe we could just notice that this is also bound above by a plus b. That's pretty clear because a over 4 is less than a, and then 3b over 4 is less than b. And then this over here is also less than a plus b, and this over here is also less than a plus b. So what we'll start off with is showing that all of these values are less than a plus b. Now we're going to show that our sequence is bounded. We'll show that it's bounded below and above. So let's start with showing that it's bounded below, and I'm actually not going to write anything down about this. So we're taking the assumption that a and b are both bigger than 0, 
but that means that A0 is bigger than zero and A1 is bigger than zero. And then if you take the average of any two numbers that are bigger than zero, you get a number that's bigger than zero. So that's all you really need to do to show that this thing is bigger than zero. And now we'll show that it's bounded above by A plus B using induction based off what we saw on the previous board. So let's make our base case. And our base case is a uh, pretty clear here. Let's notice that if we take n equal to zero or n equal to one, we'll need both base cases in this case because we're doing a strong induction proof. This will lead us to see that a zero is equal to a, which is less than a plus b, and that's because b is bigger than zero. And then a one, which is equal to b, is less than a plus b, and that's because a is bigger than zero by our assumption over here. Okay, now from here, let's make our induction hypothesis. And like I said, this will be a bit of a strong induction hypothesis. So let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to one, we have the following inequalities. So we have a k minus one is less than a plus b, and a k is less than a plus b. Then we'll approach the next term. So let's consider a sub k plus one, which is the average of a k and a k minus one by our definition over here. But then we can apply our strong induction hypothesis to get that this is less than a plus b plus a plus b all over two, but that's clearly equal to a plus b. So let's see, we have a k plus one is less than a plus b after assuming that a k minus one and a k were less than a plus b. Okay, so now that we've shown this thing is bounded, we'll show that it is increasing or decreasing. Actually, we'll show it's a little bit of both increasing and decreasing, and we'll be a little bit of hand wavy with that, mostly because I wanna leave you with like a little exercise of how to write it down carefully. Now we're not gonna quite show that AN is monotone because I think it's not, but we'll show that a subsequence of AN is monotone. So let's start with a case first. So let's say this is our case number one, which is the case when B is bigger than A. So let's notice that if A and B are equal, then we have a very boring sequence because if A is equal to B, then their average is just a or B, depending on if you think about A or B. And then so on and so forth. The next term will be the average, which is still the same number. It's a constant sequence is what I'm getting at. So the only interesting cases to look at are when B is bigger than A and when A is bigger than B. Okay, so let's jot down a little bit of what's going on here in the case when B is bigger than A. So notice that a0 will be less than a1 in this case. That's because a is less than b. So recall that a0 is a and a1 is b. Okay, but now let's look at a2 built off of that. So we have a2, let's recall that is a plus b over two. But if B is bigger than A, that is most definitely less than B, which is equal to A1. So to summarize, we have A2 is less than A1. So we have this brief moment here where the sequence is increasing, but then it's decreasing again, because like I said, A2 is less than A1. But then let's look at this. A3 will be equal to A1 plus A2 over two. Then since A1 is bigger than A2, this is gonna be bigger than A2 because if we replace this A1 with A2, we replace it with something bigger. So here we see that A3 is bigger than A2. So you can see that we've got this increasing and then decreasing and then increasing and then decreasing and so on and so forth. So what it looks like we have is the following. So I'll write it like this. It looks like A2n is less than A2n minus one. So that's like what's going on right here. And then A2 
2n plus 1 is bigger than a2n. So let's put a little box around that. And that's in fact something that we can easily prove by induction by using our data collected over here as the base cases. Okay, so just to reiterate, the 2nth term is less than the 2n minus first term, whereas the 2n plus first term is greater than the 2nth term. So that motivates us to maybe try and compare all of the even terms with each other and all of the odd terms with each other. So let's see if we can do that. Let's see if we can compare a2 with a0. So let's notice a2 is equal to a1 plus a0 over Two, but that's equal to b plus a over two, but that's gonna be bigger than a plus a over two, which is equal to a, which is equal to a zero. So we've got a two is bigger than a zero. Well, let's look at a four. So a four is equal to, let's see, a three plus a two over two, but then a three, is bigger than a2 by this rule right here. So this is bigger than a2 plus a2 over two, which is a2. So let's see, a2 is bigger than a0, a4 is bigger than a2, and then I think that we can probably build all this up to, to show that a 2n plus two is bigger than a sub two n. So we technically need to prove that by induction, but I'll leave that to you. And then we can play a similar game with the odd terms. So let's do that over here. So let's start with a three, and notice that a three is equal to what? a two plus a one over two. Okay. But what's a2? Remember that a2 was equal to a plus b over 2, and then a1 was simply equal to b. So we had something like that. But then what did this simplify to? This simplified to a plus 3b over 4. I think we did that calculation a little bit earlier. But now let's notice that's less than what we get if we replace a with b. So this is b plus 3b over 4, which is equal to b, which is equal to a1. So we have a3 is less than a1. So it looks like we have the even terms increasing and the odd terms decreasing. So that's pretty interesting. Okay, so let's summarize all of that at the top of the next board and then we'll work towards finding the limit. But now we've showed that the even terms are an increasing sequence, the odd terms are a decreasing sequence, they are both bound above and below, so that means they both individually converge. Now we'll show that they in fact converge to the same value. Then after that we'll show what that value is. So let's maybe start with this. Let's say L is the limit of the even terms. And so that'll be the, like I said, limit as n goes to infinity of a sub two n plus two. That's like the limit of the even terms pretty clearly. But notice that that is the same thing as one half times the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub 2n plus a sub 2n plus 1 using our recursion over here. Okay, but now let's introduce the limit of the odd terms as well. Let's say that m is the limit of the odd terms. Recall that we know that both of those limits exist by the monotone sequence theorem. We don't know that they're the same yet. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub 2n plus 1. Okay, but then applying the recursion, that's a half the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub 2n plus a sub 2n minus 1. But now notice that this right here is exactly 1 half L plus M, and this is also 1 half L plus M just by taking limits of each of the individual parts. Again, we can split those limits up because we know that they exist. But look what we have. We have m is equal to 1 half l plus m, which is equal to 1 half l plus m, which is equal to l. So that's a weird roundabout way of doing it, but I think that's kind of a nice approach to show that these two limits are in fact the same and thus the limit exists. 
And now that we have that, we can go about actually calculating the limit. We just determined that our limit existed. Now we're ready to take our value or to calculate our value. Let's take our recursion over here and rewrite it a little bit. I'm gonna write this as two times a n plus two is equal to a n plus one plus a n. And then I'll write down a bunch of copies of that equation for different values of n. So notice we have two a sub two is equal to a one plus a zero. Two a sub three is equal to a two plus a one. 2a sub 4 is equal to a3 plus a2, all the way down. So 2a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2. So we've got these, what, is, what are they, n minus 1 total equations. And now we'll take the sum of these n minus 1 equations and see what we get. So taking the sum on the left-hand side, we'll have two times a2 plus a3 ending at a n. And then taking the sum on the right-hand side, we'll notice that we've got an a0 by itself. We have two a1s, so let's write that down. We have an a0 plus two a1s. And then we've got two a2s, two a3s, so on and so forth up to 2an minus twos. So an an minus two will match with an an minus two right here. So let's write that. We have two a2 up to an minus two, but then we have a single an minus one from this. So plus an minus one. But check it out, like almost everything over here is exhibited over here on the right, si right hand side of the equation. And so we can get some cancellation. So moving all of this stuff over will give us, let's see, 2an plus an minus 1 equals a0 plus 2a1, but that's just a plus 2b based off of like our notation. Okay, so let's note that the a2 to an minus 2 terms just straight up cancel, and then the 2an minus 1 cancels with one of these. That's why we end up with something like this. And now we can take the limit and everything will finish off. So taking the limit of this left-hand side gives us 2L plus L, which is 3L. Then the right-hand side is a constant A plus 2B. So in the end, we have L is A plus 2B over 3. So that is the value of our limit. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.